praise him. Hallelujah. What's going on? Happy Sunday, February 4th, guys. And today, you know, I asked the Lord to make me more like Jesus. Hallelujah. Because this is who we want to be. Read about Jesus. Be like Jesus. Spread his love everywhere you go. It is a true gift to those who feel hated right now. His love is light that lights up the world for to give them hope for tomorrow. When they think that there is no love left in the world, we got to show the love of Jesus in our hearts. Walk in the spirit. Then we're connected to Jesus. Be filled up on his word. God Almighty's holy word. And we're filled up on him to pass it on to the next person, to fill up on Jesus, to overflow with his love and pass that love that he gives us on to the world. Give God all your full focus, energy, and strength, guys. Lately, I've been struggling here. A lot of distractions, this, that, the other thing, even the past is creeping up, tapping me on the shoulder, man. Been busy working, doing other things, and I need to be in my word a lot more these days because times are getting kind of hard on the boulevard. Demons are being released um, from Euphrates River, dried up. The demons would be released, and I could just feel extra heaviness, man, you know? Um, it's like, you know, I was getting a little out of shape, right, or a lot, and, um, you know, my muscles weren't as big as they used to be physically, and I had to go to the gym. This is our spiritual gym right here. We open up. This is like Planet Fitness spiritually to us Christians. God's word will strengthen you like Planet Fitness or the 24-7 fitness gym here in Holton Lake. It, a great place to go work out, but this is even a better place to go work out right here in our word. God's word will strengthen us. Uh, bench pressing, right, and then jumping jacks and running on the treadmill. We'll get this body in shape physically. Spiritually, we need to be in shape, guys. So we need to be filled up on God's truth, his love, to let that overflow to other people. Pass it on to the next person and the next and the next and keep it flowing, guys, because he is the living river. He is the, the living river. He is the um, living river, the living water. I'm sorry. That flows just like a stream. Let the Holy Spirit flow through you guys to everyone. Let it pass it on. And that's the title of today's devotional, guys. And we need to be doing the Lord's work here. Um lifting up our burdens, our worries. Again, we need to be connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. And how do we get connected to the Lord? By being in his word, being connected to him through the Holy Spirit. We must activate our faith and calling out to the Lord and invite him in everywhere we go. Anywhere we go, he will come with us. We just got to say, come on, let's go. Come on, Lord, come into this moment. And so we can pass on his love that he gives us each day, each day that gives us hope for tomorrow. And pass that on to folks out there right now, guys. Acts of kindness are generous gifts from God. And it's God's love that's in us that makes us generous, whether it's through money, through time, helping someone, volunteering, or just taking time to say, hey, your hair looks beautiful today. It looks great. Oh, what a cool outfit. Nice shoes. You know what I'm saying? Anything. When we take time for other people, that's the biggest gift we can give one another is time. You know, and this is what we need to do. But really quickly, we're going to get into this right now. The Holy Spirit leading his way, leading the way here today. And uh, it's pass it on. Chapter um, 12 of Mark is the widow's two mites. There are two pieces of money back in the day, Hebrew money. And it says, uh, the widow worshiped God out of the depth of humility and genuine devotion. She gave her last two, two mites, which were like, you know, like say our last two bucks. You got rich people there who had, just say, $100, right? Just a little, um, for instance, had 100 bucks. They only gave like two bucks. They had $98 left. Just an example, right? Don't know what the amounts are, but you get it. This lady gave all she had. Every day, I try to give all I have to the Lord God Almighty. And it irritates a lot of people close and far from me. I cannot help it that I love Jesus and I want to give my best for him. If you had me on your football team or your basketball team or your football team or your baseball team, I should say, you would say, wow, man, this guy gives it all. He's doing it all, man. He's leaving everything here on the court, the field, the diamond, whatever the playing field may be. But we're in the playing field of life right now, and I'm giving my all to the Lord. It's just a handful of people out there might remember um, Brother Daryl, diddly diddly D, Daryl Mack, right? And I enjoyed playing sports. I never thought I was better than anybody. I just went out and gave it my hardest, you know, and got a lot of compliments um, on the way I played. 
football, baseball, basketball, even soccer I tried, you know, with a very good soccer player. Really wasn't my sport, but it turned into be fun, and I gave my best at that. I'm not very good at following Jesus some days, but I get and get up and give my best for him. So we need to keep trying and trying to do our best for the Lord. Stay in your word. This is where the power is found. This is where we fill up on God's strength, his love, his wisdom, his presence, his spirit. Praise the Lord, guys. Spend a little too much time lately myself watching a little bit too much TV. And, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you know, wholesome secular TV, some... Uh, you know, things that uh, ain't so bad. Not trying to justify it, but God has never convicted me of the shows I've been watching. Andy Griffith, um, Good Times, um, uh, Archie Bunker, uh, Sanford and Son. Gets a little racy, but then here comes Ann Ethel with her Bible, right? Praise the Lord. And I used to hate when she'd come in there. I'd be like, oh, no, not her in the Bible. But now I'm like, yay, Ann Ethel in her Bible. You know, spitting out scripture right on secular TV, man. And it, it just makes me feel good when I see that happening anywhere. And that's what we need to do, guys. But stay in your Bible. Stay close to the Lord because we need them now. Boy, do we need them now. But as the, the widow gave her all we need to give our all today i'm going to read um the book of mark chapter 12 verses 41 through 44 and real quickly you know holy spirit the lord leading the way you know i'm always truthful and honest about my life false light sending me out to prison back to this back to that we're just keeping it real here in this house because as for me and my house we will serve the lord me and my wife and we're doing our best to be our best for the lord obedience is where it's at okay don't matter how many videos i do today don't matter if she does a video ever again it doesn't matter how many bible scriptures you know just stay friends with the lord and he wants you to be obedient every day and when we're filled up in god's presence you know of his spirit we can share that and pass it on to other people and it's a mighty good feeling when you're in the presence of the lord in your word or watching a faith-based movie always got the faith-based christian music pumping through the stereo my little Bluetooth speaker up there. I ain't got a stereo, but it's like a stereo to me and my wife. And we get down. We boogie for the Lord. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> like David doing the dance, you know. Woo, yeah. Jesus. Go, Jesus. Go, Jesus. Go, right. Praise the Lord. And we do a little popping and locking and pump up to the sky for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I ain't going to drop because I might not get back up. <laughs> A lot of mileage on these knees in basketball and the football field. But um, but back to the story at hand, guys. Thank you, Holy Spirit, containing my energy, my focus right now. The Widow's Two Mites, chapter 12, 41 through 44. Now, Jesus sat at the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were there were rich, put in much. There was one poor widow who came and threw in two mites which make a quadrants, whatever that could be. I got some study notes here. You can look it up. Two mites make a quadrant, uh, Q-U-A-D-R-A-N-S. 43 says, so he called his disciples to himself and said to them, he's like, come on, guys, come here. Come here, guys. <laughs> can you picture that? I'm always picturing Jesus and all these stories. I mean, it's just amazing. You know, Bible's a history book. They saw, they heard, they wrote, hallelujah. And Jesus says to them, as he called them, called his disciples to himself and said to them, red letters, Jesus is speaking, Jesus is speaking, as surely I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury for the, for the Lord, right? The money's going in to the church for they all put in, or they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all she had with her whole livelihood wow i mean that's just incredible right so it says here um two mites make a quadrant it's uh for the readers uh that two mites makes a quadrant it's roman monetary unit mentioned here by mark and matthew in the book of matthew as well so it's roman uh not jewish but um roman uh monetary unit like a dollar bill these are you know mites and quadrant so um only once it was worth just a few cents. So she only gave a few pennies, but she gave more than everybody because they had so much more to give, but she gave all she had. Wow, that's just amazing, right? Her love for God to give to the to the temple that day, to the treasury, so um, just to do what was right. I mean, it's 
pretty amazing. It says, uh, Jesus' comparison of the percentages contribute by rich and poor reminds us that God measures not how much we give, but how much we retain, right? Those with greater income have an obligation to a return a larger percentage of it to God's work, right? Meaning, you know, when you got a lot, we should be sharing, we should be giving, we should be letting the Lord lead us to where we need to be giving our money to donate to them. But again, if you don't have a lot of money, which me and my wife don't, we give lots of love and we help out people when we can because God instills us to do it at that moment and we know he's not going to let us do it out when we're trying to help people get something. Hallelujah. Pass it on, right? This is what it's all about, guys. And again, acts of kindness are generous gifts of God's love. So if you don't have money, give God's love. You got plenty of that because it's an unlimited supply flowing from the kingdom of heaven out of your heart from him to whoever you meet. Stop, take time and help people. Uplift and motivate people. Stop and pay that compliment. Hold that door. Help them, old lady with the groceries or across the street or that person stopped on the side of the road with the flat tire. Pray about it, do it, and get the victory and pass on God's love in those acts of kindness, guys. Several years ago, um, Diana Clark from Rhode Island says, um, while we were acclimating uh, to a new church, a kind member began the habit of passing a copy of the upper room to our family. This is what I got. I, Me and my wife, uh, thank you, uh, dear sister Mandy out there. She blessed us and passed it on to us. And then we passed it on to Brother Gary out there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And and this is just a tremendous, um, so amazing uh, devotional that every family, every person without a family, you know, you got a whole family in God, you got a whole family, but should start your day off with this beautiful upper room and time with God each and every day. At the time, our children were in elementary and junior high school and our lives seemed very, very full. A lot of things going on lately, me and my wife, she's getting back to work. I've got this job where I'm just on call when, when my boss needs help. He's got some things that pop up. I just go right off and, and, and go into the situation without a work schedule, and God makes a way for me to make extra money to bring into our home. And uh, this is what um, God does. And, you know, it's been a distraction to a point where I'm not reading my word again as much as I should. We always make... The first thing me and my wife do is pray before we get out of bed, give God thanks before our feet hit the ground, and then we invite him, the Holy Spirit, his spirit, into our home, into our hearts, to lead us and guide us today, and then we go right to this devotional. This is our favorite. This is what my wife sits here and reads the devotional. I'm reading the scripture or vice versa, man. Do it with your wife, your spouse, your friend, your kids. Just do it. It's it's You can't go wrong spending time with God. There's not a time wasted when you're in his presence. It's just fulfilling and so worthwhile and it will make the difference at the time our children were in elementary and junior high school and then our lives seemed very full your life feeling full today probably right we wonder how we could find time each day to gather the family together to accomplish yet one more task we began to set aside a few minutes each morning after breakfast before our day got too busy and our children headed off to school before long we had gotten into a wonderful routine. Occasionally, something would interfere with it, and the morning devotional would be overlooked. When we overlook God's Word, it's a spiritual breakfast, um, spiritual food. Um, if we overlook a breakfast physically for our stomachs, then we're weak. We ain't focused. We're kind of grumpy, you know, and, and that's physically because our body's craving food. Well, our bodies, our spirit, we need God's spirit filled up on Him so we can be strong and have strength throughout our day. Occasionally, something would interfere, she says here, with the devotional, and it would get overlooked. It didn't take long to make a connection that the days begun with devotionals went smoothly, more smoothly than others. True story, guys. Whew, man, I mean, when you don't read God's word, you're lost, man. You're filled up on the world. And that's anger, hopelessness, distractions. Everything gets you angry. You're unfocused. You're not passing it on. You're keeping it to yourself. Then decades later, we are still beginning our days, right, with the upper room at breakfast. And we have started the tradition of passing it on, the devotional to friends and family members, just as our friends had done for us. Same with us, guys. Praise the Lord. Pastor Kim and Dennis Warner, they passed it on to us. And then... uh um, I didn't get any from them for a long time. And then Mandy, good Christian sister. And uh, 
And, you know, her mom, Sherry, passed it on to me and my wife, and I passed it on to Brother Gary. Over the years, our lives have been enriched by the messages of spirit-filled Christians from all around the globe. And that's these brothers and sisters on the back, man. It's a little wrinkled up, but you see these beautiful faces, our brothers and sisters around the world. And it's just amazing, amazing, amazing. And in the front of the book here, real quick, I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, it's just everywhere. China, um, Indonesia, Hungary, Hind Hindi, um, uh, French, Greek. It's it's all it's international, S Spanish, Swedish, Tamal, um, Thai. It's it's just it, it's just amazing um, devotional that that thirty four different languages and it's just God's word is just spreading. We need to pass it on around the world, guys. As we do this um, this walk for the Lord. As I got lost here on the devotional, help me out, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And as we pass it on from, from all uh, spirit-filled Christians who pass it on from all around the globe, it began with a humble act of sharing Christ's love. And that's what we got to do, guys. Share Christ's love with everyone you meet today because this world is full of hatred and no love. And the only place love flows is from up above through us, through God's Spirit, the Lord, the Holy Spirit. To, to everyone we meet, guys. Thought for the day, hmm, right? I already read it. Acts of kindness are generous gifts of God's love, guys. And just know um, there's people out there that need a hug, need a peace sign, need a smile. Um, let's give it to them today. Let's keep doing God's work and His will. And again, if we're in God's word and in prayer, always things will go smoothly. When we start the day off with God, the rest of the day falls in place. If we start the day doing what we want to do, our days will fall apart. Just as a uh, good sister here from Rhode Island, Diana, says, and uh, we need to just keep uh, filled up on God's truth and uh, fill up on his uh, Holy Spirit, you know, and let that river, that uh, the river of life overflow, right? Liver, uh, uh, rivers of living water, and that's the Holy Spirit flowing through us, guys. And let's just pass it on. All right. Praise the Lord, guys. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace be with you. See you next time. Remember, the widow gave all she had. Let's give all we got today. Because God will make a way. When we sacrifice, God would let not let you do without. Give, give, give. Pass it on, on, on. And God will provide, provide, provide. Peace. I love you. Hallelujah. <laughs>